So you just saw me prepare the mud breakfast. <laughs> Once again, I'm Hazel Lagos and I thought I'm alone in the house right now but I'm co-sharing this house with a few tenants. Now I'm gonna eat my breakfast with this butter and I also have this. You see, it's a pure honey. Amazing yung camera. Ang galing ng product shot. So, yun. So, right now, while I'm eating, you can watch a week in Van Life Day 2. So the previous episode, we arrived in Iceland and stayed at Reykjavik and explored the town of Reykjavik. So today is the day that we will be picking up the camper van from Cuckoo Camper's office. It is around 9 kilometers from the Airbnb that we are renting. So we plan to take the public bus going there because we realized that taxi is really expensive. <laughs> when you board a bus, there is a payment terminal there so you don't have to buy those bus cards and because we only did that one time. In Iceland, everyone can basically speak in English so there's no language barrier here at all. It is also a must that you go to the office to pick up the van yourself because you'll have to go through some documentation and checking out the vehicle. The public bus cost us around $12 for two persons, so that's around $6. And I think that's around 500 to 600 peso for a nine kilometer ride. And then in the Cuckoo Camper's office, by the way, this is also the van company that the movie through day and night. I was relieving this experience too when I was watching the movie. I think Coco Campers has a very reasonable price in terms of comfort and in terms of the amenities of the camper van. There are a lot of camper van rentals in Iceland and some of them are really good. They also have like RV vans with toilet in the vehicle so that's really cool but um, this is the only van that we can afford. We were very excited to pick up the camper van because um, we haven't done this outside Philippines, like doing a road trip and driving in another country. Iceland road is a left-hand drive, which is the same with Philippines. Fortunately, I and Sha both drives, so it wasn't a problem for us because we plan to take turns um, driving around the ring road. If you wanted to rent a car here, of course you may as long as you have a driving license and that your license has this translation in English, otherwise they are not able to understand it. So if that's the case, you have to use an international license to rent a vehicle. <coughs> My corona. Here, I'm trying to capture the road map just in case we lose signal on the road. And when you arrive in the office, you'll find a display of items that were leftovers from the previous campers. Some of them were totally unused and Coco Campers allows the succeeding campers to take whatever that they'll need. So we decided to take those unused items like dishwash liquid, um, detergents, paper towels, and I think olive oil. And then we did the paperwork and we checked out the internal and external flaws of the vehicle making sure that we take and document them so once we return the vehicle we have notes to compare renting a camper van in fall season is cheaper than renting it during summer because summer is their peak of tourism 
and during summer you have like almost 24 hours of daylight and 24 hours to be able to explore the whole island so that's why a lot of travelers um, go there during summer the downside is when you go during summer you won't be able to see the aurora borealis or the northern lights so we chose to go during fall season which gave us around 10 hours of daylight we have to really plan out our itinerary and plan out where we're going because for one our bills are running here you want to maximize every cent that you're paying for that vacation so this camper van is around 89 euro per night it's categorized as a B camper van on Cuckoo Camper's website. That is a Renault traffic with manual transmission and diesel engine. This camper van is equipped with gas stove. It's also equipped with cooking and eating tools and utensils. You also have cleaning tools and soap. Mattress is also provided. There's an unlimited mileage. You also have like CDW insurance, which is a basic insurance, and they also provide a cooler and running water lastly the most important is this B camper van it has heater for us it's very important because we don't know how we are able to tolerate cold without heater so the running water um, it's actually not unlimited there is a container that they provide it's around 25 to 30 liters I really forgot what's the exact amount of storage but uh, what we do is we top up or we replenish it whenever we are able to go to gas stations or convenience stores or whenever we see faucet and of course just a trivia iceland has the cleanest water in the world so once you run water from the tap you just let like 10 to 15 seconds of the water to run and you can use that it's even potable even if the faucet is in the toilet it's clean it's very clean so uh, we have a separate storage for drinking water that we also top up and the container that cuckoo campers provided we use that for cleaning and washing dishes so after the standard routine that you have to go through we went back to our airbnb so we can get the rest of our stuff and start our 1322 kilometers drive around iceland Okay, so the first on my list is the Silfra Fisher. That's the activity that I have booked one month prior to going to Iceland because slots can be filled right away and that's one thing that I really want to do, snorkeling in Silfra Fisher. So what is Silfra? It's actually a rift formed by two tectonic plates the North American plate and the Eurasian plate. The tectonic plates move around 2 cm apart every year and it is one of the largest and deepest fissures. Silfra is actually spring fed by groundwater. The water seep underground into porous lava rocks to form an aquifer. This water percolates through the aquifer and imagine that process takes around 30 to 100 years before emerging from the fisher springs and the emerging highly filtered groundwater is exceptionally 
clean and potable. For this activity, I plan to do another vlog because if I go through the details here, it will be quite long. That activity actually lasted for half a day and the water is around 2 degrees Celsius so it's really really cold. My whole face was numb after that. The only part of your body that is exposed is your face and water couldn't go in to your body. So just one thing to note, this wetsuit, it's very tedious to wear like there's a lot of layering and before you do that, you should go to the toilet because um, you're not able to urinate or pee if you're doing the activity because this wetsuit water couldn't go in and like when you're doing scuba diving you can like discreetly pee into your wetsuit i know scuba divers know this but when you are into this suit you cannot do that and if it's really really cold tendency is you are likely to visit the toilet so just one thing to take note before changing into wetsuit make sure to visit the toilet so it took me the whole morning and by the time that i'm done i went back to the parking lot this is the face of pure happiness are they? And Sha has already caught up with jet lag. She's also prepared as lunch, which is tinola. Somebody cooked tinola. This is our home for the next eight days. Correction, it's not ten days. It's just eight days. Ooh. 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 Oh, diba? Nakapag-tinola kami sa Iceland. Amazing! And then after lunch, we headed to the mud pools and geyser. Also to this famous geyser, which is Stroker. Stroker is a fountain type of geyser. And it typically erupts every 6 to 10 minutes. The usual height goes as far as... 15 to 20 meters but the highest that it could go is around 40 meters depending on the amount of pressure and here we are waiting for it to erupt no. okay. two minutes it's a GoPro to me next thing. What? 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 <laughs> so ayun, sobrang magugulat din siya kasi nakakagulat din. After that experience, we then moved and hit the road again and we headed towards Golfos. So when you're driving in Iceland, I'm driving in Iceland. Everything that you see, it's like an open air museum. And I think if you are into geology, you would really love um, Iceland because there, there are lots of volcanoes, there are lots of different rocks and minerals. So it's really, really interesting to see how things evolve. 
and you would see like a lot of I haven't seen that large amount of moss and the flora and fauna is just really really amazing so I think those people who love nature would really love to be here so arriving in Golfos again Golfos is one of the most iconic and most loved waterfall in Iceland there is a backstory why it's the most loved waterfall in Iceland because back in early 1900s the owner of this waterfall and the farm within the vicinity leased out this land to an Englishman and this person initially wanted to buy the land with the waterfall but the owner refused so in the lease contract there's a loophole there that this person is able to like build a geothermal energy project and the owner together with his daughter was devastated they highly opposed the building of the project because that guy might ruin the beauty and charm of this waterfall so what the daughter did is she filed a case and a petition so that the project will not go through she filed this in Reykjavik and when we drive Reykjavik going to Gulf Us is like took us an hour and a half that is around 100 plus kilometers and during her time she walked from Gulf Us going to Reykjavik almost every day just to slow down the process of this project just imagine going back and forth and with that kind of Iceland weather I couldn't imagine that she did that on foot in the end she became tired doing this and then she threatened to throw herself into the waterfall also the English guy had to incur a lot of costs going back and forth from his home country to Iceland the project is already delayed so he decided to just give up and that's the heartwarming story of Golfus so here in Golfus we ended our afternoon there it was a really pretty sight the sun was almost setting it was autumn when we traveled there so again we have lesser daylight to utilize our exploration we only have around 10 hours of daylight we plan to travel the night going to Snaefels Nest Peninsula so that by morning we don't have to spend the whole daylight on the road during our ride to our next campground we already have glimpses of aurora borealis but we couldn't stop because we are driving on a freeway we drove around six hours going to the next destination in google maps they claim that it's just four hours so don't believe whatever google maps tell you because it's not oftentimes it's doubled or it's more than that you have to really plan out the things that you need to do reaching our campground it's not actually a campground it's a parking lot we parked on a discreet area of the parking lot next to a 24 7 convenience store um, the reason being is because in the middle of the night if we needed to go into the toilet then we can just sneak in and use their toilet and also we feel safer having parked there than just parking somewhere without anyone else inside camper vans are actually required to camp in campgrounds during autumn and spring not all campgrounds are open i think because there are lesser tourists and it's costly to run a campground or their amenities and also almost every major town in iceland has its own campground when you do this as long as you are clean you don't dump your waste anywhere and you don't leave any tracks or trails that you've camped there you've been a good compliant and clean camper I don't think that you'll end up being reported I also practice this myself and I encourage everyone that if you are a traveler try to be a conscious traveler culturally and environmentally <laughs> So that's what happened on our day two. I think I should call it day two, not part two, no? So scratch name part two. This is gonna be a week of van life in Iceland, day two. 
Okay, so mag edit na ako and mag-work na muna ako. It's currently 8am in the morning and mag-start kami ng 9am so mag-breakfast muna ako. Thank you so much for watching and I will not tell you to subscribe or like. I think you're old enough to decide for yourself if you want to subscribe and like this video. <laughs> so guys, stay safe and I hope to see you again. Sayonara! Thank you.